Hey, it's Greg Lamb here, bringing you your cloud accounting news, reviews, and how-tos. Are you wondering what the deal with Bitcoin is, whether or not you should use it in your small business, and how you would start doing so? If so, stay with me. There's a lot of buzz about Bitcoin, and learning about Bitcoin can get overwhelming fast, so I'll try and keep things simple. To start off, Bitcoin is both a currency and a payment network. Bitcoin is a payment network, like how email is a communication network. You can send an email instantly to anyone, anywhere. You can also send Bitcoin instantly to anyone, anywhere. You can have multiple email addresses, which you can send emails between. You can have multiple Bitcoin addresses that you can send Bitcoin between. An email address can be used in any software, whether it be online, like Gmail, or software installed on your local computer, like Microsoft Exchange. A Bitcoin address can be used in any software as well, whether it be online, on your desktop, or on a mobile device. Bitcoin is also a currency, like physical US dollars. If you lose your physical cash, there's very little chance you'll get it back. If you misplace your Bitcoin address and don't have a backup somewhere, you're very unlikely to get it back. You use a wallet to store your cash. Bitcoin addresses can also be stored in digital wallets. You can have more than one wallet that you keep your cash in. You can have multiple Bitcoin wallets. It's a lot harder to trace cash than it is to trace bank or credit card transactions. It's hard to trace Bitcoins because you don't necessarily know who the sender or receiver is. However, all transactions are 100% public. So if someone figured out your Bitcoin address, it's very easy to trace your transactions. When you use cash, there's normally no transaction fees. When you use Bitcoin, you're not required to pay transaction fees. However, for the majority of transactions, a small fee of 0.0001 Bitcoin or 4 cents US is usually paid. So what's so great about Bitcoin? From a business perspective, it means you can instantly accept money from anywhere for little to no fees. There's no chargebacks, so once you've got the money, it's yours. Of course, you can refund Bitcoin to a customer, but the important part to note is that Bitcoin is a push payment system. This means that it's up to the person who controls the Bitcoin to send it to someone else. Funds cannot automatically be withdrawn from an account, like with a bank account or a credit card. Getting started with Bitcoin. I think one of the best ways to see the usefulness of Bitcoin is to try using it. So what I'm going to have you do is acquire the equivalent of 10 US dollars in Bitcoins to play around with. Get two-factor authentication, otherwise known as 2FA, to protect your Bitcoin wallet. Get a Bitcoin wallet using blockchain.info so that you have somewhere to put your Bitcoins. Send the Bitcoins you purchased in circle to the wallet you created in blockchain.info. And get blockchain.info's mobile app so that you can use your Bitcoin anywhere. What I hope to do is to clearly show you how to get set up with some Bitcoin and be able to secure it using some free and easy security technology. So let's go ahead and get some Bitcoins. This tutorial will use circle.com to get Bitcoins as the process is simple and can be done in a matter of minutes using your credit card. While Circle doesn't call itself an exchange, Circle will act as an exchange, allowing you to convert your local currency, like US dollars, into Bitcoin. Coinbase is also another popular exchange in the US. I'm not using them in this example, but you easily could use them instead of using circle.com. Let's register for a free account at circle.com. Circle has two-factor authentication. By default, Circle sends a text message with a code to your phone. What happens is that you enter your phone number, you get the code via text message, and enter it into Circle. You'll then be asked to create additional security questions. Here's a tip. You don't have to answer them truthfully. I use a password keeper and generate random passwords to fill in as answers. With the internet, it's very easy to find a childhood nickname, so it's not a good idea to actually answer these extra security questions truthfully. Once those security questions are set up, you're ready to go and use Circle. As you can see from the interface, it's easy to figure out what to do next. To get Bitcoin, simply click on Add Funds. You'll be told to connect your bank account and credit cards to Circle, so click on Get Started to do so. From here, you add your address and account information. If you want to purchase Bitcoins right away, then enter your credit card information. If you don't mind waiting a few days, then you can enter your bank account information instead. It'll take a few days to add in a bank, a circle will send a couple small deposits into your bank account, which you'll then need to verify. Of course, you can enter your information for both your bank and credit card account. Once your account or accounts are added, then you can add funds to your circle account. To add your funds, 
you simply enter how much Bitcoin you want to purchase, select your fund and source, and click on Deposit Money. I have my bank account selected, so you'll notice that with Circle there is no fee, whether from Circle or the bank. Since it's a small amount, $10, I'll get the funds instantly. Now, if I put the amount to $1,000, you'll notice some differences. Instead of it all being available instantly, I can only receive $500 instantly. And actually, this amount is higher than for first timers using bank accounts to purchase bitcoins. I can get $500 instantly since I have a purchase history with Circle. you also notice that there is a weekly limit of $2,500 US dollars worth of bitcoin that I can purchase. If I now switch to fund in the purchase via credit card, I receive different results. As you can see, a $1,000 purchase with a credit card is beyond my limit. This is because credit cards, at least for me, have a $500 weekly limit. The limit is low to protect from credit card fraud since all funds purchased via credit card are instantly available. What I did want you to notice is that there is a processing fee of $29 on $1,000, or in other words, 2.9%. This is standard for all credit card purchases in Circle. However, you will also notice that there will probably be additional fees from your card issuer. This is the cash advance fee, since this is how Circle takes funds from your credit card. Some credit cards don't charge a cash advance fee, but mine charges $5, so you may want to check with your credit card company before purchasing. To actually go ahead and make the purchase, I'll buy $10 using my bank account, since I have it set up and it's free of charge. Again, since you're new to Circle, you'll need to use your credit card to purchase Bitcoin if you want to have instant access to it. Even though I just deposited the money in my transactions list, I see a message saying that I'm depositing $10 rather than I deposited $10. So the deposit is instant, but not instantly instant. What I like about Circle is that every step of the way there's quick access to more information. So if you click on the link, how long do transactions take to complete? you can get the answer to why the instant transaction isn't quite instant. If I've read the answer correctly, it can take from a few seconds to 40 minutes. So what to do now that you have Bitcoin? Let's make your dealing with Bitcoin a bit more secure. We'll get two-factor authentication. Because Bitcoin is a digital currency, it's good to make sure you have some basic safety set up to protect it. A common and easy way to add security is to get two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication. Two-factor authentication may sound complex, but it's really not. It's simply an additional verification that makes sure you are who you say you are. It's the same concept as a physical safe that requires a key as well as a secret code. The key is one type of authentication, while the code is a second type, making it a two-factor authentication system. The two-factor authentication system I recommend using is the Google Authenticator app for smartphones. Normally, whenever you log into certain websites or apps, you'll be asked for a password. However, if you have two-factor authentication set up, they'll also ask you for your authentication code. This provides extra security, since if anyone hacks you and somehow gets your username and password, they won't be able to log in as they don't have your smartphone. I should note that if you lose your smartphone and it has no password protection, then this two-factor authentication won't necessarily protect you if they can access your email app and do password resets. So what I do is make sure my smartphone has a password on it. I also have my smartphone set up so I can remotely delete my smartphone if I lose it. You can easily download the Google Authenticator app for your smartphone from the App Store or from the Play Store. Circle already had you set up two-factor authentication when I sent a code to your phone. However, it'll probably be more convenient to use Google Authenticator since you don't need to have cell phone coverage to use it. So to set up two-factor authentication using Circle, simply go to your settings page. Then go to security. From there, you can choose to use Google Authenticator instead of text messages as your method for two-factor authentication. You'll then get another authentication code sent to your phone as a text message, just to confirm that you're authorizing the change. And then you'll get a QR code that you can scan in using your Google Authenticator app on your smartphone. So whip out your smartphone, fire up the Google Authenticator app. After that, you choose the scan a barcode option and scan the barcode shown on your computer screen. You will then see your authentication code that you can enter in to confirm that you'll use Google Authenticator as your two-factor authentication. I'll wrap up this first video in the Bitcoin 101 for a Small Business series. In the next video, I'll show you how to set up an online and mobile Bitcoin wallet and transfer your Bitcoins between wallets.